So we're out on the road again, uh, meeting our wheelchair sports members around regional New South Wales and the ACT. What I think is different this time is that we're also bringing along some of the great people from GIO, and I'm really pleased that they'll hear firsthand the impact that their support of our work is making uh, to people with disabilities out here in regional New South Wales. <laughs> oh, yeah. Morning, Mick. Yep. Here you go. Brian. Brian. Ben. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, Ben. Yeah. In our cage, we've got you know current chairs. We've got some relics. We've got a bit of history. We've got some ex roller hawks chairs in here. So Ben, it's so important when someone shows up to wheelchair sport for the first time that we're able to give them some sort of piece of equipment that suits. Suitable. You know? Yeah. It's a big part of the Very first experience, part. right? The first experience. You want them to come back. I went to a, what did you call them back then, an open day, a wheelchair sports open day. Um, and they pointed me in the direction of wheelchair basketball. I only lasted 10 minutes on court before my brain just went, we're done, buddy. But over the next couple of months, I went, yeah, but that 10 minutes was awesome fun. I will admit, initially, it was very hard for me psychologically, having not played much team sport in the past. But, you know, if you fast forward to now, I absolutely love being on a team. You know, it's your own little mini community of friends and, you, you know, you train hard and whatnot. And yeah, we play against each other. And on court, nice. you would swear half the time those guys hate each other. <laughs> but they're all best mates. And that's the good thing about the wheelchair sport community. When you get out there on court, we're all equals. So Brian, a big part of our relationship with GIO is building stronger regions where opportunities might be less plentiful traditionally. Yep. So you would be able to speak about that, right? Given the role that wheelchair sport plays down here in the Illawarra. Oh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. You know, the funding, the support, the backup. Um, you know, basketball chairs are not cheap. Our court fees here for us to train two nights a week. So it makes a big difference to us. It sounds like you're doing a wonderful job trying to encourage that in this area. So very lucky to have, have you down here doing that. We're in Canberra this morning and we're on our way to meet with Eliza stankovic mole one of our much-loved members of our community, a wheelchair track and road racer, a Paralympian. And we'll also have Nick Simons with us from GIO, so I'm really looking forward to Nick hearing again this idea of our members um, and the impact that GIO are having on our members uh, hey, firsthand. Hey, Eliza. Nick, Eliza, Nick. lovely yeah, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. It was shortly after the Sydney Paralympic Games. Um, I actually went to a come and try day, uh, which was hosted by Wheelchair Sports. And I got into one of those race chairs and I just absolutely, I fell in love with the sport. It was like coming home, it was like your mob, essentially. Sport, I think, played a huge part in my, in my recovery. Yeah. Do you have a lot of pride now? You must, that, like knowing that you've done that role for other people that look to you now? Yeah, I think the beautiful thing about our community, and it really is a community, we talk about like those come and try days and we talk about, you know, that old equipment that's sitting around. It's not just old equipment. Yeah, with that equipment actually comes with the history. And in fact, so GIO help us with the loan equipment program and these chairs all have stories. You know, there's history and there's stories and there's memories in each of them. And now that our juniors are jumping in these chairs and having that same experience, it's pretty special, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, we love to see that at competition because they've got pride in that. And it, it's not just a, an old wheelchair to them. It's somebody's chair. And this used to be Kurt Fernley's chair. This used to be Louise Savage's chair. This used to be Manny Di Rosario's <laughs> chair. Um, so whose chair have we got in here at the moment? We've got that blue one over there. I reckon that was a Kurt Fernley chair because there's only a couple of people that could squeeze into a chair that size. This was another one of my old chairs. It's done New York and Boston and London marathons. If these chairs could talk, there's just so much history in them. And what can we do better, do you think, to grow wheelchair track and road here and wheelchair sport more generally in the ACT? Keep getting out there into the communities, you know, talk about it, go to schools, go to rehab centres, just share, share our sport. Well, now we've got a new advocate in you, Nick, so yeah, yeah, you can help spread the word. <laughs> I'll spread the word, get the team down to Tuggeranong, there mm. you go, yeah. We're an hour or so outside of a place called The Rock, which is just near Wagga. And I'm um, going to meet a fella called Aaron, who plays in our wheelchair AFL community. Hey Aaron. Hey Mick, how are you going? I'm good mate, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. For as long as I can remember, I've been playing tennis. And um, anyway, so when I lost my leg, um, I remember laying there waiting for surgery um, the night of the accident and telling my wife that I was going to beat Dylan Alcott, actually. 
was, was the words I used. Yeah, so um, yeah, after my accident, I got straight into wheelchair tennis. And then um, the guys over there sort of got me to go and talk to the local basketball guys, wheelchair basketball guys, about setting up a chair. And, and then um, so they got me involved in the local basketball stuff. And then, um, yeah, it sort of all spiraled from there, really. A lot of people talk about the role that sport plays in rehabilitation and getting back stuck into life, I guess. Is that something that happened for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I reckon without sport, that outlet, um, I would have just gone down a, a dark hole and, and yeah, it would have been pretty hard to come back from. Like, yeah, yeah, sport was definitely an amazing outlet. Before I, I had my disability, um, you know, I was the disabled sports is sort of and something that I guess you never really thought of and always overlooked. But once you're involved in it, um, yeah, the camaraderie there is, is unreal. So what am I doing? I'm making sure just, they're not just, coming. Yeah, just try and hunt them up that way. What's the experience of like of trying to get involved in wheelchair sport for you, say, out here at The Rock? I guess the awareness around it at being there is was not very, very high. Reaching out to you know, local footy clubs to be like, oh, come and play, you know, wheelchair footy for a day, like as a, as a team bonding thing, because, you know, everybody knows somebody that's got a disability, you know, so that I think that would um, would be a great way to, to reach out to people and, and draw people in. We might have to jump in there and make a bit of noise. What's the best thing about playing wheelchair sport? Getting out and being active in a sport, again, battling that mental health. Yeah, sport's probably a massive outlet to, to get out there and know you're not alone. And, you know, given you want to knock off Dylan Alcott, we might have to organise a game, eh? Yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be amazing. Right, eh? very good. Nice. We've arrived in Wagga and we've got a wheelchair AFL hub here and also some wheelchair basketball. We're about to meet with uh, Kale and Toby, a father and son, hearing their story. And in fact, we've also got the agent from GIO, the local agent, Genevieve, joining us as well. We're going to get Genevieve in a chair as well from GIO. <laughs> That'll be good fun. Yeah. 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 Here we go. Hey! <laughs> yeah. We're going all the way here. What's the best thing about the hub? What what I mean you guys keep coming back, so there must be something that keeps you coming back, right? Like what, what lights That's you up about this? Seeing the smiles on the kids' faces that are here. They they're coming down, they're just having a great time. As Dad just said, I just love watching the kids grow in sports. Um, there's a lot of kids that don't get the opportunity in able-bodied sports. So to get them in a chair and watch them play in a team sport, it just makes it worth it. Hey, so Genevieve, we've had GIO as a partner of ours for 14 years now, yeah. um, which is amazing support and allows us to do things like, you know, trying to grow the hub here in Wagga. Yeah. So I'm really pleased that you could see that firsthand. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and see the ways that we can help at the Wagga agency. Um, locally. And that's a good point. Uh, you know, what can we do to help grow the sport? Uh, for us, a lot of it is just making it more accessible. Uh, and then it comes down to little things like with chairs, uh, making sure we have enough chairs. And there's people that need somewhere to go to and they don't know where to go. And what was your first impression then? You know, it's the first time you've seen this great community thriving, playing. Was, you know, what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's harder than it looks. I just... <laughs> It's fun. Had well, a lot of fun. Your name's in the little black book yeah, for the I selectors know. now, I'm so... My, I'm waiting for my call-up. Keep your phone <laughs> charged. Exactly. <laughs> We're on the drive now between Young and Cowra, and looking forward to getting to Cowra and talking to a brand new member in Shea Hawk. We get the opportunity to learn what it's like to come into the wheelchair sport community. Were you into team sport as a younger person? Well, I come from a sporting family in Canberra. My dad was pretty big in rugby union down there. Mm -hmm. My daughter's an Olympian in rowing. Mm -hmm. um, sport was kind of like religion. Mm -hmm. As my disease has progressed, I've had to call up my competitive spirit a little bit mm -hmm. just to keep me going forward. And the only sport I've been able to do for the last couple of years is swimming. But at the end of the swimming season, uh, the seniors, Aquafit people, one of them handed me the flyer about the wheelchair basketball and I thought, I could do that. Cara really needs this. So it is a really lovely little family. If you'd said to me 10 years ago, ah, oh, Shay, I think you'd be playing wheelchair basketball in 2024, I just would have said, 
<laughs> why? Mm. Uh, but there you go, life changes. Here you are. Well, uh, we're thrilled that you're in our community now. <laughs> thank you. Mm. I'm really lucky to be here, actually. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much. You have no idea what this has done for me. It's great. We've had a really amazing few days, actually. Uh, in the first instance, I think we've got some really practical things that we've learnt about our hubs in regional New South Wales and the ACT, things that we can do tomorrow. You know, we can work on the wheelchairs that we have there, we can make sure that they're ready to go. Certainly, consistency of communication with our hubs, I think, was highlighted to us. And the third part about that is really that we can raise the profile of wheelchair sport in these regional centres and get more bums in seats. But also it was a really profound experience having some amazing conversations throughout the few days uh, with our members, uh, with our friends from GIO. And it was a real reminder um, that it's a privilege to be a part of this very special wheelchair sport community.